this episode of Got5 for Google, we're going to take a look at something I like to call mobile forms. So right we, what we have here is a Google form that was created um, on the computer, but when I actually want to use this, in this case it's a scoring guide, I have to do this on the computer and log it around to all my projects. That might be a little bit of a hassle. And that is where something like what we call a mobile form could come in handy. So we're going to show you how that works on an iOS device and on an Android device. So we're, first we're going to start looking at this on an iOS device. So if you see up across the top, I have four different forms that I have sitting on my home screen. And the reason I like to do this is if I'm going to use them over and over again, and I want them to be a mobile form, I want them to be able to be accessible really quickly. To add the form to your home screen, click on the page icon at the bottom. Then click the Add to Home Screen button. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up one of these. So what you're seeing here is the same form that we looked at on the computer, but now it's on my mobile device. So I've gone ahead, I've entered in all the student names at the very beginning. So if I was going to use this over and over again, I would just have to go through and enter the student names once. If I'm a middle school teacher, I would probably, or a high school teacher, I'd probably want to go ahead, have the first question be class, and have that go to another page on your form to where then that page would link to your roster of students. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to select a student. Then I would go ahead, put in the assignment, and you'll notice I have this as a pre-filled URL. That's something you can do in Google Forms, so by default, it's already given me fours everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and make a subtle change, and then I'm going to go down to my comments area. So this is where using a mobile form is really handy, because if I click in this comment area, I can go ahead and I can type in this area if I want to. But if I'd rather just speak my comments, I can click on the microphone. Please fix section two. We hit done when we're finished, and then we'll hit done one more time, and you'll notice that text is right there. So now I can go ahead and submit. So in this case, I've submitted that score. It's all going to a spreadsheet. And so now I can click on Submit Another Response and grade the next student's work. So you can see this can become very helpful, if, especially if you're grading physical projects or having to go around and look at different things. You can very quickly score, and then all this feeds to a spreadsheet. So then you can go ahead and have those grades auto-tabulate for you in the spreadsheet using an average formula. And now you'll have the overall score um, for this assignment using the scoring guide. So let's take a look at a couple other examples of how you might use mobile forms. So this one's called the Homework Check Mobile. So what you would do is you would enter the name of the assignment in the assignment area. And then again, you would have a list of your students. If this is the middle or high school level, you'd probably have a question that said which hour, which would then jump you to a list of your students for that hour. For this example, you only check the students who didn't do their homework, because this is the data that you are looking to track. So in this case, Student 1 did not do their assignment, so I'm just going to check them, and I'm going to hit Submit. And now, all that data is recorded. So at the end of the week, the quarter, the semester, I have hard data on who has actually turned stuff in and who has not. So when it comes time to communicate with parents or conference with students, I have that information. One other example of how this might be used is through what I call the Behavior Tracker. Let's take a look at that form. So in this case, this is a more targeted example. I may not do this for every student, but I may have certain students that I'm trying to track behavior on, and I really could use this for anything. I'm trying to track um, you know, academic work habits, things like that. But I have a list of students that I'm trying to keep track and keep this data on. So I'm gonna choose a student from the list, and then today I'm gonna mark the following areas of concern. So I'm gonna check any of these that apply. I can then add any additional comments, and I can use the speech feature just like I did earlier. Or if I have none, I can just go ahead and click Submit. And now that that's been submitted, again, that all that information is going to a spreadsheet. And so if I want to take a look at patterns and trends, I can easily do that by manipulating that spreadsheet data. So you've seen how to use a mobile form on an iOS device. Um, the process is exactly the same on an Android device. The only difference is how to get the form onto your home screen. So let's take a look at that now. On an Android device, once you have the form open, you're going to click on the three dots in the upper right-hand corner. You will then have to scroll down a little bit and choose Add to Home Screen. Select the title and click Add. 
This is now part of your home screen and everything else would work just the same as it did on iOS. So this is how to make a form mobile and use it on your mobile devices. Could be great for those informal times where you just want to quickly get data entered or for those scoring purposes when you're scoring lots of projects or papers. Contact your instructional technology specialist if you have any additional questions.